Hello and welcome back to Something Z, and welcome to What If Deku Had a Copy Quirk Part 4. Last time on the What If, the UA Sports Festival took place, with Suzuku losing to Todoroki during the 1v1s. And shortly afterward, the stand attack happened, with Suzuku and Todoroki being able to stop Stain before he was able to stab Ida. Okay, so now that's out of the way, let's jump into the video in 3, 2, 1. Okay, so we begin this what if the day after the Hosu attack, and Izuku, Todoroki, and Ida were in the hospital because they needed to get healed up after the fight with Stain. And when it was noon, Manuel, Endeavor, and the head of the Hosu Police Department walked into the room. And the head of the Hosu Police Department gave the three a deal, which was if they took all the credit for stopping Stain, they will be punished, since they did it without a license or the permission of a pro hero. Or they could give all the credit to Endeavor since he was in the area, and they will face no punishment. And after some thinking, the three decided to give all the credit to Endeavor. And after they were done with that, they were told that Manuel will get his license suspended, since he didn't stop Ida. Okay, so now he skipped to when the internships were over, and after two days, Izuku and Todoroki were able to get out of the hospital, giving them some more time to train. And during that time, Izuku and Todoroki got better at using their fire abilities. So now he skipped a couple of weeks, so now it's time for the final exams, and the scores for the written exams will be the exact same as in the canon, for both the practice and the actual exam. So now it's time for the students versus teachers test. So now it's time for the match with Izuku and Bakugo versus All Might. And when it began, Izuku and Bakugo put their arms behind themselves, and when they were ready, they fired explosion and, and they ran to the exit as fast as they could. And when they were halfway across the fake city, they got hit with a blast of air which was strong enough to break the building's road and ground around the two. And because they ran into it, they got hit harder, so they got fired all the way back to the entrance. But right before they hit the ground, the two shot out explosions to cushion their fall. And when the dust and dirt settles enough, they were able to see All Might walking towards them. And seeing him, the two ran at him as fast as they could. And when they got close enough, they began to fight with the two of them using explosions. But each explosion didn't even make All Might flinch. And seeing this, Izuku decided that he needed to be stronger, so he acted like he was going to fire another explosion. But this time, he kept moving his hand until he hit All Might in the gut. And when he made contact, he copied All Might's quirk, getting rid of Recovery Girl's quirk. Then he moved all the energy to his fist, and he tried to punch All Might with a powered up punch. But when his fist made impact with All Might, nothing happened. So he assumed that something was off. But before he could do anything, All Might grabbed Izuku by the arm, that just punched him, and he tossed him into a building a couple of stories up. But before he made impact, Izuku fired explosions to cushion his impact, but he still did take a decent amount of damage. And after a couple more explosions from Bakugo, All Might threw Bakugo at the same building, and he threw Izuku in. And when Bakugo found Izuku, the two began to talk about what they should do next, and saying that they didn't have much time before All Might would just come to attack them. In the building, the two of them decided to just keep fighting. So the two then jumped out of the already broken windows that they created. And before they landed, they shot out explosions to cushion their falls, and waiting for them when they hit the ground was All Might, and the two of them began to fight All Might, with Bakugo using his explosions, and Izuku using Endeavor's flames, which actually started to do something, but the damage was still minimal, and seeing that they couldn't win, Izuku fired an explosion as big as he could, using both of his hands aimed at the ground, which made a dirt cloud, and while the cloud was hiding them, Izuku grabbed Bakugo by his wrist, and he began to drag him into a nearby alleyway, and when Izuku was sure that they were hidden, they began to think of a plan, and while they were thinking, All Might was running around trying to find them, and after around 5 minutes, they were able to come up with a plan. So Bakugo then gave Izuku one of his godlets, and they waited in separate alleyways, and after some time, All Might began to walk past their alleys. But before he could pass Izuku's alleyway, the two of them jumped out of their spots. So Bakugo was behind All Might while Izuku was in front of him. And before All Might could do anything, the two of them went for the pins that were on the gloves. And when Izuku pulled it, he also shot out an explosion that was strong enough to make his wrist hurt. And when the two pulled the pins, All Might got surrounded with an explosion. Then while All Might was stunned from the blast, Izuku and Bakugo began to run to the exit. But the two weren't able to make it to the exit before All Might was able to regain his senses. So when he was ready, he ran at the two as fast as he could, and when he caught up, he went on the side of Izuku and he punched the air right next to him, which caused a shockwave to hit Izuku head on, which flung Izuku into a nearby building. But before Izuku hit the building, Izuku shot out flames, which propelled him back at All Might. And when he got close enough, he shot out another wave of flames at him. And while All Might was surrounded by the flames, Izuku shouted for Bakugo to keep going, which at first he was hesitant to. But after Izuku shouted him to do it a second time, Bakugo began to run again. So Izuku and All Might began to fight. And while All Might was distracted, Bakugo was able to get to the exit without any problems. But after some time, All Might knows that Bakugo was close to winning, so he was about to run at him. But before he could move, Izuku surrounded the both of them with a force field, which blocked All Might. And when All Might was able to register what was going on, he began to punch the field. But because Izuku was prepared for All Might, and because All Might was both weakened and wearing his weights as a handicap, it took All Might's three powerful punches to shatter the field. But before All Might was able to catch up to Bakugo, Bakugo was able to make it through the exit. And when he did, an alarm rang through the the entire fake city, announcing that the two passed the exam. So now we skip to the next day, and after the exams, Izuku got healed, and he got Recovery Girl's quirk back. And when class started, Class 1A was told that even if they failed the exam, they will still be going to the summer camp. 
And when class was over, Class 1A decided that they wanted to go shopping for gear for camp. And a couple minutes after getting to the mall, Izuku was all by himself, since everyone else wanted to split up to buy the things that they wanted. And before he could actually make it to a store, someone in a hoodie put their arm around Izuku, and he told him it's been a while since he last seen him, since the last time they met was at the USJ. And hearing this, Izuku began to recognize the man. It was the guy with the hand mask. And seeing this, Izuku was about to shoot out a wave of flames at the guy. But seeing Izuku began to move his body, Shigaraki told Izuku that he had the portal villain on standby, and that if he did anything to him, then his friend would warp an army of Nomus in the mall, and he then asked Izuku how many people would have to die because of him. And because Izuku doesn't know if it's a bluff or not, Izuku decided to go with it, so he put his arms down. And seeing that, Shigaraki led Izuku to a bench, and the two began to talk. And when they were done talking, Shigaraki came to the conclusion that All Might was at the center of all of his problems. And when he figured this out, he began to thank Izuku. But before he was done, Ochaku showed up, and seeing that, Shigaraki said his final thank you. Then he walked into the crowd of civilians, and after a couple of seconds, Shigaraki was lost in the crowd. Crowd. So now we skip a couple of hours, and the mall has been shut down, and Izuku was taken to the police department for questioning. So now we skip to when it was time for camp, and Class 1A just stopped at a mountain. And when they get out of the bus, they see the WWPC, who welcomed them to the camp. They then point to the campgrounds. But before anyone could question why she was telling them that, Pixie Bot began to move the ground around them. And after a couple of seconds, she flung them off the cliff. And when the class hit the ground, they were told to get to the camp as fast as they could. And when Class 1A began to run towards the camp, monsters made out of rocks began to attack them. So Class 1A then began to fight them, with them eventually getting to the camp when the sun was setting. And by the time they got there, everyone in class was tired and dirty, with Izuku feeling the side effects of all of his quirks, since he used them until he felt the effects. So he feels terrible, tired, and both of his hands were in pain. So now we skip to the next morning, and everything that happened with Koda still happens. So Izuku knows about Koda's parents. And when it was around 8am the next day, Class 1A began to train, with Izuku using all the quirks to the maximum while fighting Tiger. And ever so often, he would randomly switch quirks out with the people around him. Since he was training on getting used to different drawbacks, since he's never sure when he will have to change quirks, was Izuku now not having his heel quirk, and instead he now has Playa Body, which he got from Tiger, which allows him to stretch and flatten himself out. And when they were done training, Class 1A and 1B had dinner, and while they were having dinner, Izuku noticed that Koda wasn't there, so he grabbed a plate of food and began to run to find Koda, and eventually Izuku ran to a cliff, and when he got to the edge he found Koda, so he ran to him, and when he got close enough the two began to talk, and the two talk about why Izuku wants to be a hero, and eventually Koda just just says that he's just throwing his life away. And after a couple more minutes of talking, Izuku puts down his plate of food and he walks back to camp. So now we skip to the next day, and that day's training was the same as the previous day, with him ending the day's training with the same quirks as he did the previous day. And when the day's training was done, the WWPC decided to have a test of courage, with all the groups being the same with Izuku being alone. But before he could go in, he and the other people outside the forest could see that the forest was covered in blue flames. Then two villains start to walk out of the forest and they begin to fight Pixie Bob, Mandalay, and Tiger. And when the students see the villains, they began to run away to find a place to hide. But while they were running away, Izuku remembered that Koda was at the cliff, so he tells Mandalay where he is going, and she gives him a nod. And seeing this, Izuku began to run to the cliff as fast as he could. And when he got there, Koda was face to face with a villain, and the villain was about to obliterate Koda. But before he did, Izuku shot out a wave of flames at the giant villain, and right above Koda so it didn't hit him. And the flames hit the villain head on, burning the villain's right arm. And when the villain padded out the flames, Izuku ran in front of Koda and he told him to get out of there. But before Koda could do anything, Muscular told Izuku that he was on the list, and he asked him if he knew anyone by the name of Bakugo, and where he was. But before Izuku could answer any of the questions, Muscular ran at Izuku while using his quirk. And before Izuku could react, Muscular punched Izuku in the gut, launching him into the mountainside, making a crater. And while Izuku was in the crater, Muscular began to walk towards Koda. But before he got to him, Izuku fired explosions, launching him back at Muscular. And before he could react, Izuku was able to punch Muscular in the face, which didn't even make him flinch. But what Izuku was really doing was copying his quirk, getting rid of explosion, and exchange getting Muscular augmentation. And while Muscular was wondering what the attack was supposed to do, Izuku increased the size of his muscles in his right arm, making the muscles come out of his body. And and before Muscular was able to react, Izuku punched Muscular in the gut, making him keel over. But after a second, Muscular was able to get enough air to punch Izuku in the chest, launching him a couple of feet away. And when Izuku landed, Izuku ran at Muscular, and the two began a fight, with the both of them using muscle augmentation. And after a couple of minutes, the two of them were beginning to get tired. And eventually, the two of them go for a final clash, with them both seemingly going for a punch. But right before Izuku got to Muscular, he turned off the quirk, making him go back to normal size. And before Muscular was able to react, Izuku shot out a 
wave of flames at Muscular, which hit him head on, which made his muscle fibers start to weaken. But even with that, he was able to punch Azuku again, launching him into the mountain. But before Azuku made contact with the mountain, Azuku made his muscles grow again, and he jumped on the side of the mountain, launching him back at Muscular. And before he was able to react, Azuku punched him in the face, and with the speed of his momentum and the power of his strengths he got from the quirk, Azuku was able to hit Muscular in the face with enough force to knock him out. And after Azuku was able to rest for a couple of minutes, he increased the size of his muscles again and he gave Koda a piggyback towards the camp. And on his way, he came across Aizawa, who when he saw Azuku, told him to give a message to Mandalay. So after Azuku handed Koda to him, Azuku ran back to the camp. And when he got there, Mandalay and Tiger were still fighting the villains. So Azuku then ran to the villain Mandalay was fighting, which was Spinner. And before Spinner was able to react, Azuku shot out a wave of flames at him, which he was able to narrowly avoid. And before he was able to figure out what was going on, Azuku increased his muscles and he punched Spinner in the gut, launching him into a nearby tree. And while Spinner was trying to get up, Azuku told Mandalay the message Aizawa gave him. And when he was done, she she sent out the message to all the students, telling them they have permission to fight back. And when she sent out the message, Izuku began to run to find Bakugo. And after a couple of minutes, Izuku got pushed to the ground by something. And when he looked at what was on top of him, he saw Shoji, who was all bloody. And when Izuku saw Shoji, he asked him what happened. And in response, Shoji pointed to a nearby tree. And when Izuku looked at it, it looked normal. So he was about to ask him what he was pointing at. But before he could finish his sentence, a giant dark hand slashed at it, cutting it in half. Shoji then explained that Tokoyami lost control over Dark Shadow. And seeing this, Izuku began to fire flames at Dark Shadow. But after a minute, he was able to tell he wasn't strong enough to make Dark Shadow calm down on his own. So he tells Shoji to follow him. And they began to look for Todoroki and Bakugo, while using Shoji's limbs as bait for Dark Shadow to keep him following them. And after a couple of minutes, they were able to find Todoroki and Bakugo, who were in the middle of fighting the villain Moonfish. And when the two got there, Shoji and Izuku jumped over Moonfish. And before he was able to get out of the way, Dark Shadow ran into him, and he slammed him into a tree. And when Moonfish made contact, he got knocked out. And when Moonfish made contact, he got knocked out. Then Izuku tells Bakugo and Todoroki to fire their flames at Tokoyami. And after a couple of minutes, the three of them were able to weaken Dark Shadow enough so Tokoyami could get control again. Then after that, the group came up with a plan to get back to camp. And they decided to have Izuku and Bakugo in the back, while the others were ahead of them in a line, to make sure that Bakugo was surrounded so he wouldn't get picked off. But after a couple of minutes of walking, Izuku, Bakugo, and Tokoyami got engulfed in a blue light, and they got compressed into a small marble without the others noticing. And eventually, the two come across Sue stuck to a tree and Ochako on the ground getting her blood drained by a villain. And seeing the two of them, the villain got off of Ochako, and she ran deeper into the forest. And when the two got the two on their feet, the two told them that they were bringing Bakugo back to camp. But when they told them this, the two pointed out that Bakugo wasn't behind them. And when they turn around, they see that over half the group was gone. So they then begin to look around. And eventually, when Todoroki looks into trees hard enough, he sees someone standing on top of a tree. And when he got noticed, the man introduced himself as Mr. Compress. And when he was done with his introduction, he showed three marbles in his hands. And seeing this, Todoroki shot out a wave of flames at the villain. But the villain was able to dodge it with ease. Then the villain began to run away. And seeing this, the group began to follow the villain, but after a couple of minutes, they began to lose sight of the villain. So Todoroki came up with a plan, which was about the same as in the canon, with Shoji and him becoming weightless, and they would use Sue to fling them at the villain. And when they were close, Ochako gave them weight again. And after 30 seconds, the two of them made impact with the villain, and they landed on top of him. And when they look around, they find out that they are at the rendezvous point for the villains. So there's a giant portal in front of them, and a handful of villains. But before they could do anything, Mr. Compress threw the marbles he had, and he turned himself into a marble. Then when he was a couple of feet away, he turned himself back to normal and he grabbed the marbles, and he grabbed the marbles he threw. Then the two groups began to fight, and after a bit of time, Mr. Compress shows the marbles in his mouth, but when he reveals them, a laser beam comes out of nowhere and hits him in the face, making him drop the marbles. And seeing this, Shoji and Todoroki went to grab the marbles, with Shoji being able to grab one, but when Todoroki went to grab his, he wasn't able to grab it before Dobby. And shortly after Dobby was able to get two marbles, the villains leave through the portal, but before they left, they undid the marble Shoji had, which contained Tokoyami. And hours after that, ambulances arrived to take the injured people to the hospital, and the cops arrived to take the beaten villains to jail. And this is where I'm going to leave the what if. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time on Something Z.